Now, Josh, don't screw me on this one. Okay. Like I need you to get it right. Can you just keep it together for how, however long that yeah, just do whatever you got to do to keep it straight. Okay. Yes. Are you, re- are you ready? Yes. Okay. Welcome back or welcome front. If it's the first time joining, I am Josh. Joshua. With Josh, weird ga- Josh uh, what are you doing? I, my bad. What the heck are you? We, we literally just spent half an hour talking about this very thing. Would, would you like to run it back? My bad. I hate you. Josh, what are you doing? What Where that? are, what are you doing? Huh? What? What are what? you doing, Josh? Where? Oh my God! You, What's up, wow. everybody? Welcome to Weird Gaming Adventure. No, this isn't. No. You, I thought we talked about this, and I thought I told you I don't speak Spanish. What is no? Who's the main character in A New Hope? Uh, Luke Skywalker. Okay, Empire Strikes Back. Who's the main character? I'm gonna go with Luke Skywalker, half naked in a back to tank. Y- Yes, good job. Still Luke Skywalker. Who is the main character in Return of the Jedi? Bubba Fett. No! Josh. You know, good Josh! You I'm sorry. I'm a... Can you see that? Because I sure as heck can't because you can't see anything in this thing. Let's do the show. Welcome all fellow wannabes. Welcome to the show. Welcome to 2021. I just dropped my lens cap because that's what happens as soon as the year starts. You know what I mean? We're kicking the year off right for you. Um, But it's kind of funny. We're actually recording before 2020 ended. Just in case there's an apocalypse, then I'll for sure have an episode scheduled and whoever finds us in the next life will know, oh, like the wannabe critic podcast, like they had their stuff together. But that's neither here nor there. I have a very special guest with me today. You know him from Weird Gaming Adventure, and you might know him from a very weird fantasy. We have the showrunner, Joshua Cleveland. How are you feeling, Josh? Um, It's weird. It's late. Uh, you say that we're going to do this for, you know, before 2020 ends. Are we talking 2020 as in hindsight? Like yes. after 2020? Y- because yes. that's what I'd like to look back on 2020. Hindsight. Yeah, no kidding. It's been literally the worst year of all time. Like, I don't think... Has there ever been a, a worse time in history besides like whenever the Spanish flu hit and, you know, like the Holocaust? Anything else? I'm going to say yes. However, it hasn't affected me. <laughs> yes, but, exactly. Uh, yeah, so th- let's let's care about that. Yeah. However, 2020, it, it was a pretty decent year for you and I when it comes to the, the, the videos and the games. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of weird how you find like a silver lining, you know, throughout any type of situation. And, you know, for me, it was just like. I just got super busy all of a sudden. And I think it was the same thing kind of for you, which is why, you know, you're here. I want you to, I want you to talk about um, kind of what you've been up to. And, uh, but, but first, you know, I said a little bit about, about who you are, but why don't, why don't you tell the people who you are? Like, where do you hail from? What are you about? Who are you? Okay. I am uh, Joshua weird gaming adventure is, is my channel. Um, also have a fantasy football show. Uh, weird, a very weird fantasy football. We had to throw a uh, football at the end of a very weird fantasy because apparently if you Google a very weird fantasy, you get some <laughs> weird stuff. So um, yeah, we had a ESPN radio show. However, uh, with 2020 being as it was, it kind of kicked us in the whatnots. Yeah. The studio closed down um, football sports in general kind of got messed up and so kind of refocused as to what we're doing started making videos for games some sketches some skits and uh where i hail from springfield missouri not too far away from from mr fast and uh, originally from southern california and so nice game. it's been yeah it's been a very oh you have something for me you have something for me Oh, well, I mean, I, you know this. However, Gabe used to be like the man. He used to be the dude behind the camera, the dude behind the computer when it comes to our uh, our sports show. So 
here you go. Yeah. I mean, do so facto. You know what I mean? Like it was, no, it was, I, no, I have no I'm idea old. what I just said, actually. Uh, but that is true. You know, I did <laughs> used to work for you. You've you've come on the show before, too, you know, and it was we kind of had a, a connection there. And, you know, it was almost like there was a disturbance in the force. And I was like, you know what? Um, mm-hmm. I need to focus on my own stuff because I feel like that was my more of my calling. But it right. was it was fun to work with you, you know, for a while. And it's it's been it's been fun to see kind of your uh, transition from the sports stuff to the gaming stuff. And, you know, I kind of wanted to talk about that a little bit, too. Sure. Um, but before we get into the meat of the show, I just wanted to say really fast that, uh, you know, we do a lot of stuff over here at Wannabe Critic Productions. Wanted to give a shout out to a couple of people that help us make videos. We have Raise Energy. They keep me going. I don't know if you can focus in because it's not out of focus. But Raise Energy, they sent me a koozie. They sent me a shirt. Keep me going. Uh, you can use my code, the underscore want to be critic to get 15% off your entire order of what you get. They got really good hyper sleep formula, Joshua. I know you have a hard time sleeping. I'll tell you what, I cracked open a, I cracked open one of those bad boys. It was like a, a packet, yeah. a packet of sleep formula. I dumped it in. I put the water in and it was cinnamon bun flavor. And I was like, cinnamon bun, you got to be kidding me. And do you guess what it tasted exactly like? Uh, cinnamon bun. Yeah, it did. It was, it wasn't false advertising. I thought it would be, you know, what it actually kind of reminded me of, you remember that, uh, cereal cinnamon toast crunch. Remember I had like four bowls right before we got started. <laughs> it tastes almost exactly like that. And it was a joy to drink. So make sure you check them out. They do it all pre-workout. And that's, again, that's my code. The underscore want to be critic. Also, uh, Pop Quote USA sent me this dope Miller Light hat. I also have a natural light hat because they know I like to drink beer. Um, you can get 30% off your entire order uh, if you get your some geeked out swag over at popcultusa.com with the exact same code, the underscore wannabe critic, 30% off. Joshua, can you believe it? You like hats. Why aren't you wearing a Pop Cult hat? Yeah, you know what? Uh, Pop Cult, send me over a hat and I'll wear it. <laughs> or, you know what? Let me help you out, Gabe, Mr. Fast. Uh, I'll get my 30% off. What was the, what was the code again? The underscore want to be critic. Thank you so much for asking. Nobody ever does okay. that. You know what I mean? I think cool. that the rest of the guys are embarrassed that we have to, that we have to do this all the time, but I, I, I take, yes, I take great pride in it. But on the other hand, no one wants to hear about that crap. I just had to talk about it. Um, we're here to talk about you and, and your, your many um, things that you're doing. And it kind of, you know, I, I look at your videos, Josh, I'm not going to mince words. Um, I think it's good. I really do. I enjoy, I enjoy it's, it's a, it is a genre and a niche of gaming and content that just does not speak to me personally, the same way it's going to speak to that specific niche. And lucky for you, there's a pretty big audience out there for it. Um, And, you know, there's a lot of people out there just like you that really appreciate and really kind of got to see the evolution of games and the point and click genre. I mean, we've kind of seen, you know, telltales, uh, games kind of revitalize the genre in a lot of ways. We kind of seem like, you know, like tell me why, as well as, uh, you know, life is strange, stuff like mm-hmm. that kind of, kind of innovating on the genre. Um, did you always kind of start out playing those adventure games? Well, first and foremost, I think you just spent about 122 words calling me old. Yes. I <laughs> was much. around in, in the, uh, the golden era of point and click adventure games, which is, which is what I, which is what I cover primarily. Um, the golden day was like 1996. I was a Nino, loved the games. Um, as I got older, you know, it's nice for someone like me who has a busy schedule and I don't have to run around shooting people in the face. No, no getting shot in the face because, uh, I could just push a button, go do a little bit of work, come back. And that's kind of what the point and click adventure genre has. Uh, it has had a little bit of an upswing, with, like you said, uh, the remakes, um, Life is Strange, those are, these are big hits. Telltale came in, um, had some good, had a good run, revamped the industry. And um, while it's not a huge market, I guess when it, it's in YouTube, it's not a bad thing to capitalize on a, uh, on a moderately smaller, but passionate, uh, passionate market. So yeah. Right. Yeah. I think that's kind of what the thing that everyone's always chasing is finding their niche. And, um, you know, it's nice to find that you have kind of found that 
And, and the beautiful thing about that is too, is, you know, you kind of get a spaz like me in the studio. It's like, okay, I want to do a hundred different things and maybe it'll contact, you know, like 10 people. And that's, I, I love doing that. Like I love having my hands in a lot of different projects and, you know, I just, I just love the production aspect of it. I love every, sure. every bit of it. But for you, like you said, you have a busy schedule and being able to kind of capitalize on that one specific genre that is so niche it seems to go hand in hand for you and you play off of the, the content side of it. You play off of the content of the games, the story aspect, you know, I feel like at times it's almost like a mojo video sometimes to hear you kind of talk about your top fives and, and things like that. And, and, and very eloquently. So it, it's good stuff. So definitely, definitely ladies and gentlemen, go check out uh, weird gaming adventure because it, it's one of those things like, how do I put this? It's like watching uh, the cool, like a super interesting documentary that you have no intent of ever going to pursue. It's like, wow, those jellyfish are really migrating. You know what I they're, mean? Like it's, uh, it's pretty. yeah, exactly. It's just, it's, it's so interesting and you just, it's almost like whenever something is so far on the spectrum, but kind of in the same lane as you, but you can see it like really far away. And it's like, I don't know if I want to go that far, but you see it and you're interested in it. And it's like, oh, someone's literally bringing that right to my table to where it's, I, I got it. It's like, literally, no, I don't got it. I was going to use, I was going to use an illustration, but that, that didn't work out. You just, you do a good job at what you're trying to do. And, and it, it makes, I think people that come across it that are in my age bracket are probably going to find a lot of interest in the things that you do. Um, well, let me, uh, let me take the reins there um, for a second, because that, that's actually an interesting point when it comes to the adventure game industry. The reason why it, it all but died in the first place. Back in the 90s, um, it, was, it was what you had. It was what everybody played video games, so the point-and-click adventure game genre. Then the next generation, even like my generation, as you come up you know, with like Halo and those type of things, ADD, we have to keep moving. And so it, it, it just kind of did away with, with a lot of the younger crowd and the, it doesn't hold the attention. I'll, I'll be happy to, to say that. Um, however, if there is point and click games that are like comedic, you know, for someone who does have a busy style or is willing to play those, you will have a good time. And I think that's why I don't want to say there's been any level of success with my channel or not, but well, it has been a little bit more successful than a lot of the other channels who try to cover those is because I take what uh, some would consider to be a relatively, um, I don't want to say boring genre, but that's the primary thought when they think of that stagnant style of games. And I try to bring a more upbeat, maybe a comical level to it to kind of give a little bit of a of a balance and so yeah. you have a fresh take to it uh so to speak yeah, I, I think I, I think it's a very you know it's it's a unique take and, and, and i think the thing that works with you is like you're having fun doing it you know you're and you're consistent sure. you're having fun you're consistently doing it it's like it's filling your time mm -hmm. and and that's a that's a, a really cool you know that it's it's really cool to see the growth and and now how long have you been doing it? you've been i think i saw a post on instagram you've been doing it like five months now at this point yeah, I just uh, I just hit my sixth month. Um, the sixth month is what I was doing. Now, however, I did put out just the reason why I actually started doing this was on our uh, fantasy football YouTube channel. I I put out a top ten point and click adventure game video because I was just trying to learn how to how to edit in that that way. And uh, I mean, it had like two thousand views within like the first three days and first it was just a, a gap that needed filling so i took it off that you know and then put it up on a whole new channel and oddly enough the second time i did it i think it only has like 1200 views in six months now it <laughs> it, it didn't trigger the youtube algorithm because somebody else had already done it yeah uh but yeah i just went off track i've been doing it for six months now there's your answer yeah. yeah, that's that's cool. And and I, I kind of wanted to throw it, you know, you you kind of touched on football as a whole there for me and sports really, you know, not only football, but mm -hmm. sports as a whole. Um, 
was it kind of a bummer for you and you know your co-host Jake? Was it kind of bummer for you guys to like realize, oh, not only are sports like kind of inconsistent in terms of like because you've covered fantasy football rosters, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. hey, pick this player, but it's it's not very fun and it's kind of frustrating whenever you have to work your schedule around and it's like, oh you know, so-and-so's out and it's such and such game has been rescheduled. And, you know, you have to, unless you can make content that day on a whim, you know, based on, on what, you know, how, how did that kind of work out for you guys? I mean, have you kind of thrown in the towel at this point, just with this season or like kind of, kind of t- talk me through that experience a little bit. Well, I think that's two questions. So I'll cover the the first in regards to, um, covering fantasy football or football content in general uh i'll just be straight it it wasn't satisfying for me while we had a good time in the moment of of, in creating it it was not any evergreen content you create something and then it's gone the need for that information is gone in one day so it was a constant rush a push to not only get out the information before everybody else but also for it to be relevant entertaining and fighting with you know twenty thousand other types of uh industry uh creators or experts and um the hate was super real because we had the the esbn name behind us and while i did have a i'm considered a professional i have my my professional card and a nationally tracked uh we were barraged with, with hate, you know, from other content creators because we did not have that much of a track record. And if people see ESPN, they're like, wait, what? Bop, 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 negative. Cause th- you know, how YouTube is, they'll bring you down so that they can go up. So it wasn't fulfilling. Now to finish your second half, uh, once 2020 kind of hit through five to 10 monkey wrenches in the gears studio closed um, trying to do everything from home fast, all the edits ourselves, not knowing if there's even going to be a season. Uh, Yeah. Let's just call it what it is right now. We are somewhat of a hiatus. We do a podcast. Now we don't do anything on a national level, but uh, I'm not saying that's over. But right now, we're taking a, a couple a couple sleeps, a couple Z's, if you will. Yeah. I do have a brief sports question, too, you know, for you. Because, you know, I'm, I'm a very casual football watcher. You know what I mean? Okay. I have I have my, my two teams. You know, I like the Saints and I like the Chiefs. And it's a very casual thing. Like, I'm not going to, like, you know, people say, oh, you're an idiot. You like two teams. It's like, well, I don't really care that much. So, um there's that, you know, I, I watch those two teams. Do you feel like this, this season in particular, cause I'm asking, you know, you're the sports guy, you know, I watch, I watch these games week after week and I see these different stadiums and I see how one team gets to play in front of an audience in front of, you know, uh, however many people and another team, it's like just practice. It's an, it's an empty stadium, you know, for the most part, does that not inherently affect the nature of the game? walk me through that one because to me i can't even pay attention to football hardly or like really even count this season because it feels rigged and um it feels rigged in the sense that so and so says hey we're not going to allow you know people to be in the stands but the other person does you know or then you know the next week they can't play in front of people so what are your thoughts on that well i guess what would really be affected is the players I mean, they're used to having fans. They're used to having people in the stands cheering for them. The option of their families, their option of going home to their families and and, uh, and whatnot. Uh, in regards to fans, the only thing that I would say puts a, a, a wet blanket on everything, I suppose, would be not knowing what's going to happen from one day to the next. The, the COVID designations, you don't know if your favorite players are, are going to be playing. And I tell you what, you're throwing darts. I mean, you are throwing darts in, especially in a fantasy football perspective, because you you just, you don't know. It's Russian roulette. And um, I'm not Russian. So there's that. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I that's kind of what I was getting at too. Because to me, I feel like, you know, you watch these players, 
look, I like to play sports every now and then. I like to play basketball, you know, sometimes. And I think about if it's just me and my friends only in the gym. And I, I really think about whenever I was really playing, you know, seven, eight years ago. How much different do you play a pickup game versus people when people are watching or people aren't watching? There's no one in there other than your buddies. And then you got a group, you know, you got a group coming in to watch you. Do you not think of the game differently? It's like, oh, people are watching. Like, I better not be an idiot type thing. Because that's that's my thing. It's like, how is that fair for not only, you know, maybe the home teams that get to that get to host away yeah. people, you know, that are coming. And it's like, oh, there's no one's booing for these guys whenever they do something stupid, you know, type thing. I don't know. It just it's kind of put a damper on my on my football watching this year. In my opinion, I just I feel like. It's there's 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 a there's just another level of consistency that has been stripped away because of that. Cutting to your uh, your analogy about playing basketball in the gym seven years ago, I think that we can all say that this is clearly when Gabe was single, and he's talking (laughs) about girls watching him play basketball. Or it doesn't have to be girls. We just want to we just want to play okay so that we get picked up in the next game if we lose. Yeah, uh, exactly. Yeah, yeah, I. I get what I get where you're at. Uh, I, I really, I can't put myself in their mindset because I'm not, I've never been that type of an athlete. Um, I'm a casual athlete who enjoys to play. Yeah. And um, now if I was very, very good at something, then it'd be a little bit different. But uh, when I think about in terms of music too, you know, I've played however many shows now at this point and it's like, how much different it's like, sure. I can play by myself or, you know, I can play with my band yeah. And, you know, you're in the studio doing the thing or, you know, you're in the band room doing the thing. And uh, but whenever you get out in front of people, it's like, oh, frick, like I didn't mean to. That was an A minor and I should have, you know, should have played that whatever, you know, because that's what the, when that's they go, a better analogy. Yeah. When they go out mm-hmm. on that field, they are performing like your top dogs, like your Patrick Mahomes is your Tom Brady's your, you know, your star studded whoever is. And even, you know, the majority of the team, like they are thinking in terms of like this is a show and this is entertainment like you're watching mm-hmm. you're putting on a show for natural for, for national television so to yeah. me i don't know i just feel like it it just it kind of takes away just a little bit of the consistency just in terms of maybe the intensity it, it might just uh, yeah that's a good way to put it or maybe overtly i i don't know um probably yeah i've been there you know like i've played in front of hundreds or thousands of people on stage and then Like, actually, I'm in reverse. If there's a thousand people, that's fantastic. But if there's like, if you go out and there's like three or four people and two of them is your, uh, is your, like your spouse, significant other, yeah. then you're just embarrassed and thinking about (laughs) everything that you're doing wrong. Yeah, exactly. Oh man. Yeah. So Uh, nothing, nothing beats playing the vintage stock in Joplin, Missouri for 20 people. You know what I mean? And people coming in and out of the mall. It was kind of cool. You know, I was like. Oh, except I miffed like half of my songs, but that's neither here nor there. But we're going to move away from the sports discussion. We could talk sports okay. all day. We used to have a little show called The Chief in New York here on the Wannabe Critic Podcast, but he has moved on to finer and better things. That's our very own Caleb Henley. So shout out to Caleb. Caleb um, Henley. Yeah. I used, play, I used to play basketball with Caleb Henley. This guy has like legs the size of tree trunks. I'm telling you guys. <laughs> I mean, yeah, he's a he's a brick wall. Yeah, I mean... I think that's a strength thing. You know what I mean? Like yeah. he's, he's just a strong guy. And I, I, yeah. I wouldn't want to, I wouldn't want to be covering him on basketball. I'm pretty sure he'd put me, he'd put probably, he'd probably kill me actually, but uh, no, it's shout out, shout out to Caleb for being, for being that guy. Um, also wanted to move on back to, back to the gaming discourse. Um, okay. So, you know, we kind of talked about Telltale a little bit, and that was really my first introduction to point and click. Um, back in 2011, uh, Telltale Games, which Telltale has been around since what the mid 90s now at this point, you know, they had like no, surely no. I think so, right? Mid like 95, 96, 97, 98. Well, I think see, they made Lucas computer Arts, games, right? Lucas Arts came out in uh, 1992 or 93, and the owners of Telltale. A couple of them, Steve Purcell, they went up and opened um, uh, Telltale in, I think it was like 2000 and maybe four or something like 2000. Yes, 2004. So mid 2000s. Something like that. But yeah. yeah. But they have been like the primary runners of the great LucasArts games. So yes. Gotcha. And- 
Yeah, which makes a lot of sense when you think about it. And, you know, my my first introduction to them really was, uh, you know, the first episode of The Walking Dead. They gave away for free on Xbox Live back in like 2011 or 2012. Sure. And, you know, I remember... I remember picking that game up and picking the uh, the first episode up and playing it and being like, what a weird way to play a game. And then it clicked in my head. I was like, oh, I've heard of this, you know, point and clicks. This is back before I was really even taking, you know, gaming as a career. You know, that wasn't even part of the question. It was just kind of the thing of like, oh, like games can tell really meaningful stories and like really impact you. And, and even something as simple as like mashing the B button to get away from whatever, like it can and still mm-hmm. emotion. I feel like I'm actually a part of what's happening on screen. And um, it's kind of sad, you know, see their downfall at this point and things like that. But I wanted to see, you know, I kind of wanted to ask you like, what were some of your favorite, like initial moments where it kind of clicked for you as like, Oh, this thing is like really special to me. Um, you know, like, especially Telltale? like favorite games for no, for point and click in general. Oh boy. Okay. So um, as I mentioned a little bit on the onset, um, uh, point and click when i was a kid i i i'm old as we mentioned i don't have a four at the beginning of my age but but <laughs> i am older when i was a kid your games were uh king's quest um it, they were point and click adventures unless you wanted to play well there you go a eh, little coke and uh and just and a little rum. just a little well it's, it's a little bit of evan williams and bond, okay. bond and bond hunter proof you got to have a little bit sometimes you know what i mean continue I i'm listening so that was that was like pretty much all you go to like KB and uh, like all these game stores and instead of seeing like Nintendo games go all you saw was PC games going across and 70% of those PC games were point and click adventure games and like a they, Amiga what, Amiga stuff too where did you have an Amiga I was I, that was before my time really okay. I, so you're not that old was um gosh it was a Pentium like 50 <laughs> 50 gigabyte or sorry not gigabyte like megahertz Mega- megahertz <laughs> wow it was a, it was a okay megahertz. so you had like some side scrolling like games like commander keen and stuff but if you really wanted to get interactive it was uh, it was point and click adventures i'd say my first one that i was i fell in love with the gaming industry was a game called king's quest 6 air today uh, gone tomorrow which gosh it had to come out in like 1992 and i was I mean, I was a little, little kid, didn't even know what I was doing, but I was clicking around at my uncle's house and uh, my uncle pirated all these games. The shout out to Uncle Joe. And um, it was a magical time going to his house and playing these uh, these adventure games that he had. And But uh, yeah, I'd say my first one was King's Quest Six, and um, also a game called Leisure Suit Larry. Uh that was when I felt like I was literally looking at bad stuff on my uncle's, uh, <laughs> uncle's little boy. And um, but yeah, Leisure Suit Larry in the Land of Lounge Lizards. Look it up or or don't. Or don't. <laughs> Laser Larry in the Lounge of Lizards. It's a weird gaming adventure. Yeah. Eventually yeah, it's uh, what happens. Yeah. The movie 40 Year Old Virgin. Mm-hmm. It's essentially like Leisure Suit Larry, except he all he's trying to do is go around and, uh, and getting getting laid. <laughs> really hard for him and he dies in all these crazy little ways but yeah oh wow okay well that's you know that's they've come out with new games recently that are just ridiculously bad i had to do a couple of reviews for him for uh for a website that i that i work with and uh it it, it i had a hard time with my conscience let's just say <laughs> or, or what well other people would consider of my conscience so. yeah i i well yeah i mean say no more i understand and i, I kind of wanted to talk about that too and i appreciate you kind of shedding sure. some light on your history um we'll get to what what is the name of the website uh, adventuregamers.com okay yeah i want to we'll we'll put a pin in that and then come right back to that Boop. um Speaking I wanted to pen, ask, like, I'm looking at myself in here and I'm, I'm noticing that like my nipples have like stars. Yeah. Right shit. where your nipples should be. There. There's some stars there. Hey, everybody. PG 13. Look at us go. Yeah. Um, Let's go. <laughs> so I wanted to ask you, you know, we're, we're seeing kind of like a, a, a rise in indie games that are coming out. And I think yes. they're kind of playing off of the, the point and click kind of, uh, uh, I don't want to say game loop because I don't think that's what it's 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 like first person mixed with like point and click. And I'm not talking about Minecraft. Yeah. I mean, Mm -hmm. I'm not talking about Minecraft. I'm not talking about stuff like that, which even though when you think about it, 
I mean, you're pointing and clicking a lot on Minecraft, but I was thinking, you know, have you ever played something like the Stanley Parable where literally it's just like kind of going around and seeing which which way you can go the next time? And like, there's not really because I think that was the biggest thing with point and clicks and correct me if I'm wrong. It wasn't really ever about the gameplay. It was more about the story and the experience that you were getting from said games. You know what I mean? Um, at least, you know, for the point and clicks that I've played, you know, the newer Telltale mm-hmm. games, that's kind of what I got. It's like, oh, I'm literally living this story, you know, this mini series of sorts uh, is kind of what it feels like. Um, have there can been I, any? Go ahead. Can I uh, cut you off for a second there? I think it might be good for some of the younger audience that you have to know what a point and click adventure game is, like what a true point and click adventure game is. Yeah, so definitely. You, yeah, you elaborate described it, yeah, you described it pretty well there. Um it's an interactive story, uh, I suppose. You control, you tell your character where you want to go by clicking where it is. You can pick things up. You can mix them together to create other things. You talk to other people, and essentially you solve puzzles through either um, combining things, actual puzzle solving, or, or dialogue trees. So it is an interactive uh, a book that tells a story. And so... That's a good way of putting it, an interactive yeah. book. Yeah, because they're... There have been so many games where I'm like, oh, man, this could have been a TV series or I was like, I don't actually I don't know if this could have been a TV series. Like, I feel like the only way to tell the story would have been like a comic book or, you know, a a a large novel collection to explain everything, you know, and I think point, you know, that's with whatever games. But I feel like with point point and click games, it's no exception. You know, the level of detail that you find in some of these games is just absolutely incredible. Um yeah, thank you for for clearing that up. Ha- have there been any as of late though that have really, you know, you kind of talked about the older stuff, laser, laser Larry's Lizard or whatever. Um, have there been any of the more you know recent games that have come out, or you yeah. know things like that that have come out where you've kind of seen the genre innovated on a little bit? Oh, absolutely, and uh, much to the chagrin of a lot of the the grumpy uh, classic adventure game gamers. Um, of like my early era. However, I really enjoyed them. Uh, uh, Beneath a Still Sky or Beyond a Still Sky was essentially, it was like, it's more of an action adventure. However, because it's 3D, you're running your character around through the the WASD keys and firing things up like that. It's essentially Minecraft. The original one came out in 1992, uh, Beneath a Still Sky. So there's those. You mentioned like Life is Strange, a lot of these, the newer games, Telltale, they've revamped all of their old games, turned them into more modern um, uh, Twitchy style style of games. And uh, progression, look at you don't ever want to stay stagnant. And so I'm all about it, especially if it's going to bring light to um, a, a genre that I'm passionate about. Yeah, no, I think that's really that's that's really great, and I think. You know, there, there's games that come to mind too. Like I think about a game called This War, This War of Mine. I don't know if you've heard of that, but it's like basically a post-apocalyptic story where you're essentially telling your characters, like, "Hey, we got to go explore X, Y, and Z," and like, "Oh, we, I got to knock down this wall because, like, you're going to, you're going to this house that you don't know if there's anyone in there, so you got to like make decisions." But it's a side scroller, yet it's still a point and click. Like you're pointing and clicking what you want your person to do and making decisions based off of that. And in that way, I wouldn't think of that as a point and click, but in a way it kind of is like in terms of gameplay and, and things like that. I think ultimately the thing that makes the point and click genre special is the fact that the good ones or a lot of the good ones that I've played, all give you the chance to choose your own adventure and give you the choices to make. And I think that's what differentiates, you know, um, not necessarily a good one versus a bad one, but one that I'm going to be more interested in where I feel like I think the the best way I've been told before is like, okay, when you go and buy a coloring book at the store, you have a very clear idea of what the, you know, designer wants you to to do. You know, they've, they've filled in the line, you know, they have the lines there for you, but you can fill in all the colors. But at the end of the day, it's going to be a similar result (laughs) that you get versus what somebody else gets. Um, And, and that's where it separates a good uh, point and click adventure to a modern adventure. Back in the day, the bad point and clicks were, you know, you had the linear versus nonlinear. You're told where to go. Whereas if you had, you know, like the LucasArts created some great games where you could get to the same place 
multiple different ways, which, you know, had a different experience, different playability, you know, you could go back and play them. And now it's, it's a hundred percent. You choose how you want to get to your ending. Most of them have a dozen different types of endings. And so, Again, that's a, a nice innovation to what is, uh, frankly, a dead system. And so, and I see, you know, a lot of these developers like kind of coming up and it's like they're around your age developing these games. And I think about like uh, Detroit Become Human, which in a sense is a very like theatrical point and click where, you know, even yeah. my wife, my wife played through that one. That was one of my favorite games of 2019, you know, or mm-hmm. 2018, whenever it came out. But at the end of the day, it was like, I didn't shoot anyone. I didn't punch anything. I didn't execute any other actions other than yes or no and making a decision. Sure. And I think, you know, in terms of the genre and, and versus, you know, looking back on something like we were talking off mic about, you know, full throttle or like Grim Fandango or Day of the Tentacle, mm-hmm. just to see like how far the, the creation, just kind of how the innovation has come. Sure. It's nice to know that they kind of got their ideas from those older games, you know, those older things. It's like, oh, well, I wouldn't, you know, whatever, Walking Dead or, you know, the Telltale stuff wouldn't be here without whatever. You know what I mean? Um, well, it's And frankly, like any anything that you're in an adventure, it all it's rude started from from point and click. You know, you went from the point and click adventure to MMOs. Um, well, I'd say tomb like Tomb Raider was like the first uh point and click that went a little bit further into the adventure uh industry style, you know, 3D adventure to like the MMOs to like the Star Wars Galaxies, World of Warcrafts to um now it's just pretty much everything is just a amalgamation of of the same style. Red Dead Redemption, that's a point and click adventure. You know what I mean? It's it's a yeah. it's a modern adventure, but uh, it's just an evolution of of the point and click. And so, right? Yeah, which makes a lot of sense. Innovation actually, innovation comes innovation in gaming, and so yeah, that's 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 a good way to put it. Um, I want to shift gears a little bit and talk a little bit about uh, the site you're working with, um, yeah. Adventure Gaming D- Daily. Is that what it's called? adventuregamers.com adventuregamers.com so kind of kind of walk me through how you got in contact with them and and you know kind of how what you've been doing for them well uh again i'm old <laughs> and uh the adventure game industry is very old so adventuregamers.com is like the largest adventure game website like in the world and i've been on their message boards since i was 15 years old since like message boards just started coming out so i developed uh relationships with the with the owners and these people for 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 quite a, a long time and so it was it was really simple that once i started creating adventure game uh content i started posting on the website or on the message boards and so they said hey we love it we don't really have any video aspects to our interviews and and whatnot and so they said, can we please use yours in collaboration and uh, help each other? And uh, so that's kind of where we're at with, with adventuregamers.com. So, Which has I, to be kind of discussion. a good feeling. I mean, you think about it, you know, us as, as creators, I feel like it, it's so hard to not get into like a number game, right? And like sure. look and see, you know, a, a big mistake I see a lot of people making is like, oh, I have X amount of subscribers. Um, yeah. And they put like a worth on that. It's like, okay. You can have 10,000 subscribers and 9,999 of them cannot watch any of your stuff. <laughs> right. Um, and I think that's just kind of a trap. And it seems like, you know, for the most part for you, it's like, hey, you know, we got we got 500, like we got 500 or 600 subscribers now at this point, however many. It's like, that's pretty yeah. cool. But you keep making stuff because you genuinely want to. And that that is what resonates, I think, to every, or really should resonate. But at the same time, I think it's much easier to make stuff and know you're going to get a response or at least to have somebody see it because you know, you have kind of that partnership. I mean, has that kind of taken a, uh, not taken a load off, but that has that kind of been like a added layer of excitement, knowing that your videos are going to get some traction because you're working with adventuregamers.com. Uh, well, it's nice to know that you're not going to put a zero burger 
up on the board. There's nothing worse than, than, you know, putting up something and then you look a month later and it's got like 60 views or something. That's uh, that can be embarrassing. Like, uh, so yes, it's nice. It's nice in that regard. Um, and fortunately in this genre, people are generally older for the most part and, and passionate just like I am. So they're supportive and, um, so yeah, it's nice to know that you're going to have a, a nice bed to fall to fall into. And now I I wouldn't just choose just any type of of website because I want something that's going to relate what what I stand for, um, and where I would want my stuff. And you mentioned I think that's a a problem that a lot of of we as as YouTubers, especially me and my my last my last channel we. I ran into it was it got depressing when I put something out and then the content was gone like nobody needed it and uh, so no not really much traction after like a year and a half and videos weren't really watched so but now it's like it's not necessary because it, it is something that's that's legitimately fun I'm not racing to do and like you said, it's nice to know that there is a, a large website who respects, appreciates, and and finances. <laughs> so there's never anything wrong with having a uh, having some bucks put in your pockets. Yeah, for, for I mean, too. like yeah. for me, you know, I've been very transparent on podcasts and stuff like that. It's like, oh my god, like you're doing, you have four podcasts and you're you're doing all this stuff, whatever. It's like, well. I have the most valuable thing at my disposal, which is time. So I have yeah. time where I'm able to do, but you know, I think we can both agree at the end of the day, it's like two things. One, even if you do put a zero burger up there, I better have made it for me first and see, you know, see that up there. And it's like, Oh, I made that. And even if it only gets 10 at the end of the day, I know that I liked that thing that I made. Cause if I, if I put it up there and I didn't like it and I didn't like it because it got less views, then I think that you're looking at it the wrong way. I'm not saying you're saying that. I'm just saying that would suck right. if people out there are thinking it's like, oh, well, this video is useless because it got zero views. It's like, no, you never know how the algorithm, what the algorithm is going to trip. You you don't know. And, you know, for me at the end of the day, if I, if I put something up that I'm not 100% like, oh, I loved making that, mm -hmm. then I don't put it up. And I think had you even not had adventure. Yeah, I mean, it, it's yeah. it's fun. And at the end of the day, this is the second point I was going to make. People who think that it's not work are kidding themselves. Like, oh, gosh, yeah, it is a lot of work. And at the end of the day, whenever you have, you know, you, you put a brick or two on on the foundation each day, and you know, you you're, you put it on the house or whatever the right. illustration is you want to use. In a couple of years, however long you've been walking by and putting a brick or two on this thing for a year or two or however long, and by the end of the by the end of the year or two, you're like, oh wow, this is a semi decent house I've built here but it took time and, and people want to be famous and like get all this traction like immediately. Okay. So that's the problem. That's yes. the problem. Like if you go like, look at, I I'll say this unequivocally, you're not going to be famous. No. Like you're not going to be famous. You may be acknowledged. Sure. You may be acknowledged. If you do get somewhat relative in fame, then that's a huge, that that's a bonus. If, if you consider it a bonus. Sure. Um, one neat thing to to consider though like look at we all start with some some garbage you know or i think not not necessarily that the videos are garbage but like youtube does not push it sure it doesn't consider your video good for the algorithm however and i think this is a really important point is to not to get discouraged because you look at those videos that are buried deep down there in 4 months one day you're going to look that last you looked at it was like 60 or 70. And then somewhere along the lines, YouTube learned that that's what you do. You are a professional at that. Yes. You look back, scroll down 30 or 40 videos ago, there's going to be 3000 views on it. And you, yeah. never, and you look at that. And you're like, what? I, I had no idea. Yeah. It's like, cool. Yeah. Awesome. That's, that's the bonus. And you, you hit it on the head. It's like, yes. for me, mm -hmm. I think of the thing is like, I, I'll give you I'll give you just a brief example. I, I'm filling with my camera. Give me just one second here. Okay. It's okay. No big deal. My pants are off right now. Oh God. Vamp. He doesn't know because he's not looking. Vamp. Is it? Is it not? <laughs> Who knows? It's really weird. 
I heard every word of that just then, just so you yeah. know. <laughs> um, I'll tell, you know, I'll give you an example. So I, uh, I'm i a big console gamer. You know, I do have a PC now. I am. I have the PC thing now at this point. But I also am primarily a console gamer. And uh, there's no shade to, to PC players or anything like that. My camera is being finicky as per usual. Mm-hmm. Um, but I made a video about Horizon Zero Dawn. You know, and I'm sure okay. you're familiar with the game. It's it's sure. you know, one of the. I mean, it is the console, one of the console sellers at this point for PlayStation. So we know we got the new one coming out. You know, in a relatively timely manner, hopefully. Um, but you know, I made a video and I was like, okay, is this game still good in 2020? You know, is it still worth it? And I, it was one of those things where I just I put it out there because I wanted to. I wanted to make the video. Sure. And I just, I had no idea. And it's, you know, it's a relatively popular topic, but I put it out there in the first week it had like 30 views or something like that, you know, but now all of a sudden, you know, I'm kind of checking it. What is going on with my camera, man? I'm, I'm checking it, you know, every once in a while, I'm checking the YouTube numbers and kind of seeing what's going on. And it's like that video is getting views every day now. And yeah. like, to so me, it's being suggested all of a sudden. Yeah, all of a sudden, which is cool. And I think about, you know, I did a, a review on CrossCode. Um, shout out to uh, developer for get, you know, giving us a copy yet again, because that was a, a really awesome thing. I love that game. And, you know, that one picks up views like every day. And I just think about it in terms of like, wow, like for a few minutes a day, people are watching my stuff. Isn't that what it's all yeah. about? Like it's about getting people to watch your stuff. And really, that's not the main thing. That that's that's the bonus thing. It's about making How something can we that watch you're... your stuff though when your webcam keeps messing up. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what's going on. It's 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 being finicky. Canon, get so, your yeah, get finicky your stuff together. Is is the YouTube algorithm? You get you say you get two or three an hour or a day. All of a sudden, one day, I'm telling you, one day you're gonna look back and that all of a sudden had a boom of like a thousand viewers in like an hour. Because YouTube all of a sudden just start pushing that everywhere. And then you're going to hit like five a day. and or, or at that point, if you've made really good content, then that's how it goes viral. Apparently, whenever that's happened to me, I must not have made really good content. It ends up with like six, 7,000 views on, on some of those. But it's better than when we first look at it, like 30 or 40 views. Oh, no, I suck again. Yeah, that's but like even that. then, you know, like 30 or 40 people, it's like... To me, whenever I start, because this whole thing for me started with the podcast, you know, and it was like, yeah. wow, my goal was, okay, I'm doing this because I genuinely like it. I love to perform. This is an aspect of performance that I never, I can't find anything else that gives me the same feeling, you know, and if I had the choice of playing a show or doing, you know, several projects for the time it's going to take me, it's like, I'd rather work on YouTube stuff. I feel like that speaks to me more at this point. I'm doing something that I has really you know impacted my life in a variety of ways and i think about it in terms of like if 10 people watch this thing that's that's a win like that will always be a win for me because if i make videos for the next 10 years and i make at least 100 videos a year you know that's a lot of zeros by the end of the thing and if 10 you know if 10 people watch the thing and i got all these videos then hey you know that's that's successful to me but you just keep doing it because I, I just, I don't, and you can kind of bounce off this too. Do you feel like forcing yourself? Cause I mean, I, I do, I do have a business. I have a production, you know, I don't know if you could call it a production company at this point, but it's just me. But I mean, I have a business where I produce content for other people. I do social media for other people. I give guitar lessons. You know, I am take, we live on this farm, you know, I have a very busy uh, and I also have, sure. you know, a busy life outside of secular things, obviously too. Do you find that forcing yourself to make these videos and do this thing, whether someone's paying you or not, or whether you got a review co- code or not, do you feel like it kind of builds your work ethic even more? Work ethic? Um, it, it's hard for me to answer that particular question because uh, I'll, I'll be frank with you. I am, I'm in the position to where I, I'm in marketing. And so this type of stuff ultimately at the end of the day helps my, my main business. So whether it's not like I'm, I'm losing time because I feel like it it is a productive amount of time, even if it doesn't hit what my, my goals are. 
because ultimately at the end of the day, if I, if I continue to gain traction, not only will that help my artistic side um, that I want when it comes to getting my voice out in on YouTube or however it is, you know, you mentioned being a, a musician. I, I, I was as well. And, and this does fulfill that. But it also helps the bottom line, the bottom dollar when it comes to me. There's because there's a bridge that helps with my real career with that, with making products and such. So um, work ethic, yes, because it is part of my work. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll say that. Um, in regards to the first, I, I do have a, I hate to, to disagree, but I do have a different uh, a viewpoint. If I don't get a lot of views, I am disappointed um, especially, or if I, if I get disliked, if I get downvoted, that's where it actually hurts. Cause I feel like someone is purposely insulting me because I feel like I did good work. You know what I mean? That's where sure. it hurts me a little bit more, but <laughs> ultimately, um, I, I would like my voice to be heard. And sure. so now if I, I expect it to be heard eventually down the line or anything, but, um, yeah, just just varying viewpoints when it comes when it comes to that. So yeah, and I, I do think, want the views. Yeah, no, them. sure. Yeah, I think that's a bit. Yeah, I think I think everybody wants the views. Everybody, I would much, you know, I'd I'd rather have 10, 15 people in the comment section, you know, commenting right. on videos. And even if they only got a hundred views or whatever, it's like okay, whatever. And I think to say that you don't want the views, no one wants that. But it's not all I'm there for. Was all I was trying to say. To me. Well, it, Go ahead. Well, and for you, you do such you do great work. I mean, there's a reason why we hired you to work or to work for us. And your videos are are absolutely, absolutely wonderful. And well, maybe I'm much. spoiled at this point because like I mentioned, the the types of videos that I do, it does have a very niche and passionate type of and so I know that there is there's at least a hundred people out there that are gonna view every single one. They're gonna comment on all of these and they're going to be very, very supportive. And so uh, you are you are in an ultra competitive niche, man. And so if I would I'll be straight with you, if I was doing what you did in your niche and with my mindset, that's how a lot of YouTubers they quit or they get burnt out or, or something. So props to you for having that type of mindset. You're much more patient than I am and <laughs> yeah. you're better than me. And so it's, oh, it's I don't know about that. Um, but no, I think I do think you hit the nail on the head though, because at the end of the day, it's like, why are you doing this? And, you know, you spent 122 words a minute ago saying basically, you know, this helps you make money. And that's, that's great for me. This has always been something, you know, as someone who really grew up, kind of in the thrust of YouTube and kind of seeing the whole PewDiePie thing. You think you think about PewDiePie and Mr. Beast, they had to make over a hundred YouTube videos relatively, you know, sure. crappy ones. What we would classify as crappy YouTube. They were having fun. They were doing it because they yeah. wanted to do it. And yeah. the success came later, you know, versus you look at like someone like Smosh and stuff like that, where their main thing was like, no, we're the voice of YouTube. We're the top dogs, yada, yada, yada. And, you know, PewDiePie just looked at him and said, Okay. I'm, yeah. I'm just going to do whatever I want. And, and not, not to say I want to be like PewDiePie cause I think that's like crazy or even Mr. Beast, but just driving home the point that sometimes kind of going against the grain in terms of I'm doing this because I genuinely want to. And I think, you know, the, the, the thing we got going here at wannabe critic productions is like, everyone is a wannabe. Everybody wants to have their voice heard. But at the end of the day, if you're not a somebody, does it really even matter? We all know it matters, but you know, society says it really doesn't. Um, cause everybody has an opinion, right? Sure. So to, for us here, it's kind of like, we are going to spend our time and talk about things and be 100% ourselves and be 100% transparent and be like, okay, this is why we do this. We do a variety of things here because we genuinely want to, and it's fun. It is genuinely fun. It hasn't become a job. It hasn't become work yet. And whenever well, I, you know, kind of getting back to the work ethic thing for me, you know, being able to have a lot of time, I feel like if I'm doing anything, if I'm watching a show, if I'm watching, a, if I'm playing a game, whatever I am doing has to be for a project. It has to be because Some my time activity. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Well, that's the thing is like, yeah, you're watching TV, but I'm going to podcast about this, but I'm going to do right. a YouTube video on this, but I'm going to do yada, yada, yada. You're using, these are all things I'm genuinely interested in and I'm not doing it because the competitive nature of the niche is saying, oh, you got to talk about this thing. It's like, no, 
leave me alone. I'm going to do what I want to do. And if you don't like it, I, if you don't like it, I genuinely don't care because there's going to be ten, at least 10 people out there that do. And to me, and, that's and to awesome. Your point, and to your point, if you don't do something that you like, if you're synthetic about it, look at then people are going to know, yeah. you know, we're, we're not stupid. We're not stupid people. We watch other YouTube videos. We watch the people who are copying others uh, and it's cringeworthy. It's like it authentic versus synthetic is where uh, you actually lure people in. And those are the people who are going to watch longer. Subsequently, YouTube then is going to uh, like, give you your views and so yeah. it is it is paramount that you do what you like and what you want to do and anytime you have a good work ethic and you couple it with something that you like success will follow yeah i agree kind with that. is 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 gauged by your where what you're around however right. success at some level will follow so, yeah, that's kind of, I think, you know, that's kind of the mantra for, for content creation. I, I read this a long time ago and, you know, Gary, I don't know if you know who Gary V is, but you know, he's been very like, oh, I, I yeah. love, I love Gary V because he says it doesn't matter. Just, just do it. If you want to do it, who cares? Like just post it, do the thing, you know, make it as good as you hit can. Record. Yeah. Hit record, do the thing. And I, that's, that's all I've loved that for the, you know, the past year or whatever I've been on TikTok. But even before that, it was like, I needed someone that I could kind of look to that was saying those things that was approachable. Cause he seemed like a really approachable guy, but I read, you know, a long time from a content creator is like, look, the most valuable thing that all of us have is time. But the one thing that people, the one thing that makes content creators quit or, you know, basically like they say it's not worth it is, oh, this isn't worth my time. How do you know it's not worth your time unless you actually give it plenty of time? And uh, that's really rang true for me. It's like I never thought, you know, the podcast is now, I mean, it's it's a very, it's still a humble audience, I think, or a modest audience rather. It's it's not like we're so booming or whatever. It's like, hey, we got thousands of streams now at that point. Like that's, I never thought that would happen. And, you know, we got multiple feeds with people listening and people enjoy and people message us and say, hey, I enjoyed this or whatever. And I never thought that would happen ever. But here we are doing something I'm doing loving and I have the time to do it. I'm putting in, we're all putting in time, you know, to make it happen. And yeah. as long as you are willing to put in time, it's not a matter of if you will be successful. It's just a matter of when, kind of like what you were saying. So yeah, I, I totally agree. Sage, sage wisdom from, from, from a weird gaming adventure. Um, I'll say one, one more thing. Go uh, ahead. If, if you don't mind, no, um, please. I think, you know, you mentioned some of like the top 10 videos and those type of things like those, those really don't do well for me because I do believe that that's something that um, look at everybody has done or whether it's the, the niche has not necessarily been done it, but uh, people expect something that they've been doing it, doing it better. It wasn't until like, I really started injecting what I, my personality into these things to where like things it really became relatable uh to people and uh subsequently things have been, had had an exponential exponential increase so that that's another hand in hand with the authenticity versus uh being synthetic and so no yeah i th i totally agree because there's been times you know whenever i was just focusing on music when i first cause just was trying to start to get into the swing of youtube for me, it was kind of like, oh, I have to talk about this album or I have to do this thing. And then it became, it was like, well, I don't really want to talk about anything that came out this week. I, I guess I'll do a top 10. I guess should never be in the repertoire of your content. It should always be, oh, I'm excited about this thing. I want to do this thing. And because I agree, anytime you make yeah. something just out of like, oh, top 10, whatever, you know, I think we, I think that audience dwindles and grows smaller every single day almost go ahead i just wrote that i'm writing that down i guess should not be in the equation yeah i guess is not it's not it's not it's not it should never be i guess i'll do this thing it needs to be oh i want to do this thing i'm i'm happy to do this and honestly Excited. it's gotten to the point at the yeah at the, at the at the end of the day it's kind of the point to where for me i don't know if you're this way and i think you know it seems like you post about every week is that true? Is that about right? You know, every week, every other week around that area. 
Um, once it started becoming a lot easier, I've been posting uh, two or three times, uh, two or three times a week, especially when it started doing the things I really enjoy, like the the, the comedic stuff. And so, sure. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't know where I was going with that. What were we talking about before? I lost my train of thought a little Being bit. Being consistent, I imagine. Yeah, yeah, consistency. For me, it's gotten to the point too. It's like the subscriber count doesn't. I don't want to say it doesn't matter because I want to make stuff for my audience, but I look at my analytics and it's like, oh, 90% of my watch time for the past six months have come from people who weren't subscribed to me. So, which is fine. That's good. Um, but at the same time, it's like, if I don't want to make a video, I don't feel like I need to give an explanation as to why I'm not, you know, if I want to take a break one week, it's like, Hey, I'm not making a video. I'm not going to make a big deal. I'm not going to say anything. It's just like, look, right. There's no video this week. And I don't think there needs to be a guilt about it because it, whenever it does become a thing of whenever you have, you know, 10,000 subscribers or whatever, they know you're going to be back. They know you're not going to be inconsistent. Yeah. So I think that's, that's another key factor too. That's, that's important. Um, so I wanted to kind of shift gears. I don't know. Are you good on time? Yeah, no, I'm good. What's so funny? What are you freaking laughing oh, at? It's fun. Uh, Julie's coming into my studio. She's sneaking by. She's got her hair like uh, like um, uh, Princess Leia. Oh. So, yeah, it's probably going to be a good night. <laughs> <laughs> Shots fired. Um, so <laughs> let's, let's shift gears a little bit. So you were, you know, we're kind of yeah. nodding a little bit to Boba Fett uh, in the beginning of this episode. Oh, yeah. And you and I have kind of talked off mic about the Mandalorian and things yeah. like that. And you kind of mentioned to me, you'd reached out to me about this project you're doing with with Boa Fett. I don't really know what it is, but I'd like you to, you know, and ultimately, I just I hope you genuinely know that at the end of the day, I just I do not have time, um, even though it does yeah. sound interesting. And I'll be there to support it, you know, and listen and watch it. But what exactly is this project that's coming up? What is Weird Thank Gaming you. Adventure about to be, you know, a part of? This is so. Uh, this is really, really exciting. Exciting for me. So I, uh, I wrote a script, essentially just kind of goofing around, regarding um, Boba Fett. This is before you know we found out that Boba Fett's uh, apparently not dead. So Boba Fett is. Um, he's got PTSD. He has. He has escaped from the Sarlacc pit. He's a drunk. He is um, a hermit, so to speak. And Disney has approached. Uh, approached boba fett asking him to be a spokesperson they did not real or just a, a figurehead they didn't realize just how bad off he was or is so the series is essentially them still giving him the job but under the stipulation that he fixes his disney image and uh boba needing money but i i call him boba just for reasons that you may figure out later on. Um, he needs money. He accepts it with zero interest in actually following Disney rules because he hates Disney. So throughout everything that he's doing about being uh, Disney friendly, he is doing it uh, in his, we'll just call it drunken way. So, uh, <laughs> okay. Yeah, I, I sent it around to a bunch of, a bunch of people and uh, we had to make some adjustments for obvious reasons. Uh, one being uh, IP issues, uh, Disney, Boba Fett. And uh, so it was picked up by, by IGN. And uh, so we got a four, a four seven minute series that we're putting out subsequently followed by uh, some other different little sketches for, uh, for, for him, his character. And it's been um, so fun. Let's just let's just say it's been it's been so fun. It's been a blast. So has it been like have you been like record like is it is it still pre-production type stuff or is it like okay, so in we the got post-production? One, oh, we got episode one recorded. So we were given a budget to, to essentially film the thing. And so we got people coming from quite a bit. Unfortunately for us, we're we're we hail from Springfield, Missouri. And there's a lot of good local talent around here. You know, you got the skinny improv, you got, um, gosh, the nights. There's a, there's a show. Gosh, I can't think of it. Instagram boyfriend creators, guys. Anyways, uh, we've partnered. Oh, up with yeah, some, yeah. Some, uh, some shoot, really what is the name of that? People. And, uh, and so we filmed uh, the first episode and it is being cut up and, and uh, finished right now. And we're in pre production for episode, episode two. So super, Very cool. exci super excited. When is it going to start rolling out so we can kind of look for it? 
uh, either the first week of February or the second week of February. And it'll be either on, you can find it, whether it be on adventuregamers.com, IGN, uh, Weird Gaming Adventure, uh, and Mike and Gary. Mike and Gary is a great uh, YouTube channel. 72 million views so far. They're, yeah, uh, I was. I remember you sent me over their stuff. I kind of was checking. Peoples. Yeah, I was checking so, that out. Looked like I had some pretty good stuff on there. Well, that's exciting. That's cool. That's that's another thing. It's like, man, it's it's kind of cool to have your you know your hands in a few different pots, so to speak. And you know, like at the end of the day, it's all it's all things that you're passionate about. It here, just know that we will be ridiculing it once it comes out. I and I hope so. And there's going to be so much to ridicule. Putting it I'm through the meat you. grinder, you know, because we're hard on Boba Fett over here on the Wannabe Critic Podcast. Oh, oh, do it. Well, I've been doing a lot of Star Wars Galaxies content for uh, a server called Legends. And so it's kind of gone hand in hand. And a lot of the people that follow me for that, um, I've been feeding a little bit of uh, a little bit of stuff. And they're like, what is going on here? Um, it's it's good, but it's like it's like, yep. Yeah, you're weird. <laughs> You're weird gaming adventure type of thing. So that's what we're going for. And, uh, put us through the meat grinder. So yeah, well, that'd be cool. we'll be looking forward to seeing that. But other than that, you know, what is, what, what are, what can we, you mentioned Star Wars galaxy. What can we see kind of along the pipeline, you know, in the future for, for you, your YouTube channel, um, in the future, is there, was there any projects you're working on that you want to specifically mention? No, I don't want to get away from, um, from an established audience that I have, because like I said, there is a certain amount that, that love what has already been put out. So I don't want to grind too far away for that. Um, I've gotten away slightly when it comes to like star Wars galaxies, because it, like I mentioned earlier, it's still considered like a point and click. It's like the entry late phase of, of MMO, but which is called it kind of taking me a little bit into the star Wars stuff. I'm not, it's not been well received when it comes to the star Wars stuff, but so ultimately sticking around there making some sprinkled a little bit of sketch comedy uh into there and so we've had a lot of help with um and inspiration from a lot of different people you know you've mentioned I've, i watch your show you know like jamie french and and those type of things and like that i i think that's the type of stuff that um it ha, is good for me and so we'll, we'll we'll see where it goes same type of content just uh with maybe a little bit more comedy about the stuff that I like. Yeah, that's, I feel like that's the way to do it. You know what I mean? And if you, and if it turns into a thing is like, well, screw it. Like for me is like, look, I, I got subscribers now and I got, you know, I'm in the algorithm now. So now I'm actually going to talk about what I want now, instead yeah. of waiting a couple of years, it's like, I'm just going to talk about it now. It's like, but we wanted music. It's like, look, go follow the other channel. If you want music stuff, it's over there because you know, it's all games now, baby, all games, not all games we did. I mean, there was like a solid two week period where we, you know, it was just like star Wars stuff. And to me, it was like, yeah. if you don't like it, I don't care. And you know, at the end of the day, we've lost subscribers for it. Because they don't want to see that stuff, and I don't blame Music's them. It's hard though, Gabe. Like music is, and it has such a an, a fan base that's so critical. Yeah. Well, and it's also be critics like, so, but yeah, well, is much more forgiving. <laughs> yeah, when it is hard, you know, I made over a hundred, you know, music vid music reviews yeah. in my first year, and it was like the biggest thing I noticed was just how hit and miss it was, and yeah. it's like okay, well, at the at this point, then I'm just gonna talk about like bands that i actually want to talk about maybe talk about a new release every now and then but i have yeah. some ideas you know for like the the music podcast and things like that because now what i've done is for the people who didn't you know catch the music reviews the first time i'm going to basically regurgitate all of those reviews onto a podcast and basically you have a, a year's worth of content that hasn't been heard by a certain audience at this point so you know it kind of works hand in hand but now it opens up opportunities to where it's like oh i have friends that are aspiring musicians it's like hey come on the show, play a song live, talk about the song, do the thing, you know, and reaching out and to different we'll musicians and it. yeah, exactly. And then we'll talk about it. So it's, it's, it's just, I, I haven't ever, the only thing at this point that I've, that I've come to really kind of uh, make the decision on is I have a lot of interests that I want to talk about, but it's just finding the right way to the right way and the right time to incorporate it. Like for instance, you know, story time, that's done for right now. We got another second. We got a second season coming up. Probably realistically, probably won't even get get to starting it until the middle of this year, this coming year, or you know, twenty twenty one. Since this podcast is technically in twenty twenty one, um, 
and beer bros, you know, stuff like that. I got some good ideas for that. Whenever it's time for it to make its reappearance, it will, but I'm not going to stop doing it. It's just, it might go kind of like you said with the sports stuff, might go on hiatus for a little bit because I'm focused on other things. So here's what you do. You just smash them together, have <laughs> beer bros critiquing bands. So you just get a little slobbery, you know, a little drooly, <laughs> a little drink, a little bit of beer. And, and, here, uh, and, and just here's the oven. Flows. Here's see the oven 100. This this uh, video is, in <laughs> fact, not sponsor, sponsored by Evan Williams, um, 100 proof uh, single distillery kentucky straight bourbon whiskey um it is not but i've had a few sips this evening and it's been it's been nice now we, we kind of talked off mike a little bit you know a couple of days ago and i, I believe you know I, I don't know how much you listen to the show and there's no hard feelings if you don't listen to it because while well, we're a bunch of wannabes but you know we kind of talked about uh jabba you know the first time you were here on the show and just kind of how did they have like a drunken sexy party you know the night before whenever they all wake up like is that what happened you- yeah, basically. I mean, there's no there's no way of getting around it. I think that that might have been what happened. Um, and that so, may or may not be in uh, in one of my uh, Boba Fett uh, sketches. Well, I'm interested to see how that works out. It's we actually got comments. We actually got comments about that, um, if I remember correctly. It was, it's been over a year ago at this point. But someone actually like said, hey, that was a funny joke. So there you go. But we actually, you know, the first time I had you on, you kind of took me by surprise because you actually asked me some questions. So what do you say? Do you want to end the show and you can ask me some questions? If okay. You have any. Well, first of all, uh, let's call it. Uh, <laughs> I love it. I love it. Okay. I don't remember being on the show. <laughs> really? So I'm having a hard time here. You caught me a little bit off guard. Like you said that like three times. I don't remember, but honestly, over the past this 2020 and over the past year between my two shows, I must have done like 400 different podcasts and shows from all sorts of different other content creators and stuff. Okay, let's talk about how uh, how fat um, Bib Fortuna is. Uh, <laughs> how much how much fart tuna has this dude's been? How, how much do you think he's had inside those tentacles? And are those tentacles, Gabe? What I, are those? These, I, it's these it's little- like it's like the lek you for the um you know the the Twi'lek, the the people. Isn't he a Twi'lek? He is a Twi'lek. I don't isn't know. He? I don't think so. No, he's not. We did a story time on that. Yeah. I can't remember which one he is, but yeah, it kind of caught me off guard. And I mean, at first it was a little bit of a Wado thing. He's like. Oh, Boba, welcome back. And then, of course, you know, I got... knew you were going to come. Yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. exactly. Okay. Um, um uh, J- I did not know. Okay. I did not know that uh, Boba Fett was Django Fett. Yeah. Yeah. So until it's just... I actually heard that on, on your show. And to me, it was like, boom, there it was. Cause it, uh-huh. it was somewhere in the back of my cranium, like going through in my eyes, into my heart and exuding out of all of my orifices, including my pee pee. And so oh when I, <laughs> I'm like, okay, there it is. Thank you. My OCD has now been fixed. So what, how long did it take you to figure that out? Or did you know going in? I always knew. I mean, I'm a, I'm a I'm a real big Star Wars fan. You know what I mean? Like, I won't look at I won't look at the pre the the people talking about stuff going into the show. I don't look at anything going in. I want to see it then. No, I I didn't. Well, I right knew I knew back in episode one. That's Tamora. What's his face? Like because Jango, like the back of his head. No, he turns around. He about faces and walks towards okay. the camera, and I'm like, that's Boba Fett. That's freaking Boba Fett because. Boba was a special clone for Django sure. and Django was played by Tamora, what, however you say his last name. And of course, you know, we saw in all the prequels, or at least in attack of the clones and revenge of the Sith, you know, you, he would have his, his helmet off at times. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, like for me, it was a no brainer. It's like, Oh my God, like I know who that guy is. So that has to be Boba Fett now at this point. So I, I I'm the same way as you. I don't look at anything going into anything anymore. Um, and it's it's nice, like especially with games, like I don't read anything until I play it myself. No. And then like you know, like I and my favorite thing to do is like to look at like a little bit of a video, like for instance, this whole cyberpunk dilemma, right? People are saying, like, oh my god, like all these influencers being like, This is the greatest game ever, and all you know, I'm like, I'm watching before it comes out. <laughs> before it comes out, you know, I'm watching a video of it and I'm like yeah, y'all are acting like this is going to be the next Skyrim, and it's not. It's going to be – it looks like crap, first of all, um, but no one's going to have that conversation. 
And well, what happens, you know, whenever it gets released? Same thing with Avengers. People are going off about Avengers. I'm like, I am telling you right now, Avengers needs to be free because that game looks like crap. And look at the same same type of situation. Another question. We'll we'll leave it at Avengers needs to be free. Like, look at everything about Avengers has gone downhill, like yeah. for the for for years. Another question. Uh, okay. How do you suspect? Don't talk about lore or anything like that. I'm not, going to. I'm like not that. going to. I'm not saying anything. Okay. How do you think Bubba got out of the Sarlacc pit? Did he burn up his poo poo hole and got pooped out somehow? Like, come on. <laughs> no, I think the pit probably rejected the armor, maybe. Um, maybe something to do with Beskar. And I think maybe it like regurgitated him out like with, you know, acid and stuff like that kind of because he's all burned and stuff like that. So that's kind of my take is like it basically spewed him out of its mouth. And, you know, that's how he survived. But it had to have been many years later. Yeah. Well, that's what no, I think. Like, it can't be because it's, you know, it's six years like, after Return of the Jedi. So, you know, he ate weak way down there. Come on. <laughs> like, yeah, probably. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's seen Boba's seen some stuff. You know what I mean? Like he's stuff, that, he's that's... seen some he's seen some things. But it is it is kind of crazy, you know, to see those two Mandalorians doing the thing in like the book of Boba Fett and all that stuff. It's a lot of really interesting news. But at this point in time, like I think it's cool. The Mandalorian's a better character for me. Like I like him better than I like Boba Fett. Uh, sorry. Now, and I'm gonna go off the book a little bit here. Now, this this is the this is why actually I, I've been enjoying your shows is because half of your the people that you have on, which I I know all but one, half of them I'm like heck yeah, heck yeah, screw you, you mm, not so much. Okay, but now where where was I going uh, with this? I, I had I had something that I was going to ask about. Okay, I what makes you like the Mandalorian? character him so much like what is it about him i think is it's kind of the same thing for boba fett you know that we speculated on for years is like this kind of mysterious guy we know he was a foundling and now i you know adding i think my respect for the character comes from also from like the lore of like the clone wars and things like that and just kind of seeing Whenever Bo Katan shows up and she's like, Oh, you're a child of the watch, you know, and obviously that's Death Watch, the organization right. she was a part of at one point in time, that whole thing. Mm -hmm. And you just kind of know that there's like a distinction, there's a separation and like almost like a separate sect of Mandalorian culture that he has just kind of been lumped in. And first of all, I love Pedro Pascal, the actor, and I think he fulfills the role. Until you watch Wonder Woman 84. Uh, okay, we're not gonna go there because I I'm I'm already I'm already like, I'm trying not to be sad. I'm trying to go into it with an open mind. Cause literally this was Josh. Josh texted me. He's like, have you watched wonder woman 1984 yet? And I'm like, no, he's like, God, it sucks. <laughs> Just like <laughs> tore it to pieces. And I was like, all right, well I'll, I'll make up my own mind. Um, but no, That's for the, for the Mando character, for me, it's like you have this kind of contradictory action and set of actions versus what you know we think of mandalorians being it's like all oh, this like brutal like legendary warrior race that yada 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 and they're all about honor and stuff like this and yet but yet he's toting this enemy th this ancient enemy around that he's not even really aware of it being an enemy you know to him it's like oh you know the jedi were ancient enemies of the mandalorians and yada 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 and he's like well i don't care like i'm i care about this thing and you know i, I want to see it through and i, I just i think the fact that his actions make a lot of sense in a lot of ways. And he's kind of representing and doing things on screen that we're kind of all feeling and there wanting to happen. It's relatable. It's like, okay, yeah, like this is awesome. Yet there's still so much. I don't know about him with Boba Fett. You know what I mean? We had also that, that ticket that, that this is the, a bomb is not about to go off. If you hear like my watch going off, with Boba Fett, we saw him in Empire. He was awesome. We saw him get creamed and Return of the Jedi. We had a few books and comics about him over the past 20 years, and that's it. There's nothing know. to Boba. There, yeah. there's, there's, there's no depth. And is he is he a cool character? Yes, he's cool. He's legendary and canon. He's is beloved. He? He's he's beloved by many. Stoic. <laughs> Yeah, he's, he's yeah, he's he's beloved by it's like, oh my god. And I think probably the, the most heated episode we got into on the show was or you know, the, the most heated discussion we got on the show with the Mandalorian was like, which episode was better? Was Ahsoka's episode better or it's Boba's episode better? And yeah, 
for like half of it, it was like split down the middle for a lot of different reasons. And, you know, I'm not going to, I'm not trying to like bring that back up, but it was an May interesting I weigh in on those two that what you just said. And then first, let me, let me weigh in with what you, first of all, what you just said, the best episode in my mind, and uh, you already had your say. So if you want to look back, go back and check out the panel, go see his old views, everybody help, help Gabe fast out. I'm going to say the best episode was Boba Fett for the reason why half the set or half your panel was is because I am of the mindset to where he came in and I had this feeling like, uh, this genuine, oh my goodness. I loved the melee action. I loved the excitement. Whereas I felt, uh, I felt excited for the, this episode prior to that because it was more, and I think maybe you mentioned this. I felt that excitement based on the art and not the choreographed action. Yeah, and I mean, um, for me, it was all about Ahsoka Tano. Like, she mm -hmm. is basically the Anakin Skywalker or Luke Skywalker of the animated series. Like, that right. is her. And I know that character. So, like, that's what it feels. I don't know her, but I mean, I, you, you've you watched her for, you've watched her grow up, and we yeah. have a really interesting sense of, wow, I saw you as a very young person, and now you're grown up into this, you know, mature person right and you have seen that full arc at this point and to know that there's more was really exciting dave filoni did a great job her. you can feel what she's gone through at this stage of life exactly you know. because i was there i watched it all happen mm -hmm. and with boba it's like good god what happened to you you know what i mean like and i'm not saying that the boba episode wasn't epic it was but was there was just there was more yeah it was action packed and there was just more mm -hmm. sentimental value and I always say, like, for me, I, I've been saying a long time that, you know, Star Wars means specific, like, means different things to different people. For me, it's about story and characters. And the character of Ahsoka, for me, is one of my favorites at this point. Right. And to see her kind of fully fledged out, fully fleshed out live action and Rosario Dawson killed it as the character. It was like, man, yeah, I'm really well, excited to nostalgia. see the Ahsoka show nostalgia is one of the the most potent drugs that are out there you can sure. literally you could sell anything if you base it around around nostalgia and you had the nostalgic uh, uh um allegiance to her i've maybe seen a couple seasons you know of that but that's how thing is we just went through the clone wars six months ago like that's what we spent the past six months on i was it wasn't like i grew up with clone wars i didn't i right. just watched but it you've been watching it for like she's been on like three different types of series for eight years you know what i mean yeah it's, i'm just saying i had never watched clone wars until six months ago is oh, what i'm saying so i, I have no i have more nostalgia okay. for boba fett than i do for you know but that's what i'm trying to get at is like yes i and i get what you're saying like the Boba Fett episode was very potent and full of nostalgia. Right. Um, and here we go. We've, we've brought this argument back up and I want you to give your say for sure. But for me, it was like, I, I loved Ahsoka and I, I can't wait to see where she goes. And for me, it was just more of a bigger character moment. And you could really see Filoni's stamp, which Filoni, you know, the create, you know, he basically took care of rebels and he was basically Lucas's right hand man. You can see his stamp of approval on that episode, and I love it. And I'm not saying Robert Rodriguez's episode wasn't great because it was, but I think you you hit the nail on the head. You have two very different. It's almost unfair to compare them because you have two. You have an action packed episode, and then you have like a, a, a semi. That's what, that's you know, what makes a good series. That's what makes a good book. Is you have one like you make have one chapter that that gives all the drama and that tucks you right here and then the next one it brings you up a little bit with a little bit of action and then it brings you down that at the end of the story all of the episodes the chapters put together creates a good book now i'm going to go back uh to what i was mentioning earlier R run it back a little bit this is the first show and and mind you the mandalorian one and two is is special this is the first show that i had more of an allegiance to the show itself the story the, the the art of the storytelling the way it's all put together than the characters i have zero relation to the characters in this series so the like when i read a book i want to say okay i could be that character 
I don't, I read a lot of books. I don't read novels where the protagonist is a female because I can't be that character. That's what is makes the, there's something about this series that I'm saying like, he does a wonderful job being counterintuitive of what you're, you're thinking. All the other characters are, they're not about the character. They're about how you could bring all of the story together and then they go back and mesh everything well. And so for that to happen, they're doing a wonderful job and bravo to, to Disney for, and this is my theory instead of putting all their eggs into the movie basket, maybe 2020 did do something for us. They're like, okay, well, this streaming thing is a, is a big thing. So let's put our, our, our eggs in the streaming stuff. So now we have all sorts of, of what I hope to ha- be uh, good content. So if nothing else, 2020 brought us a, well, nine new miniseries coming out. Yeah. You, you hit the nail on the head. You hit, you really did. And yeah, I'm I'm excited for it. We're obviously big Star Wars fans over here. It's a big talking. I mean, that's what we started the show on, you know, originally with Star Wars. So we're obviously big fans over here, and we're excited, you know, for the content that's going to come out of it too. It's a lot of podcast discussions. We got a lot of people coming on. You know, there's some things in the works. Hopefully, you know, things will. Hopefully, we're we're looking for a better 2021 than we did in 2020. And uh, on that note, Josh, I think it's probably good a good time. Yeah, I just I'm not wearing pants, and I'm about to stand up, so you should probably cut the show. always the pants stuff with you but no josh thank you so much for coming on man thank you for taking the time to to do it uh we're happy to have you on as the first guest in 2021 um for the first show back really you know uh it's a it's a special it's a special episode so thank you for taking the time it was uh it was fun and uh and you asked you don't know if i watch a lot i'd say i watch 60 percent of your 60 percent of your stuff well that's a good number and that's that's good that's good. That is good I, stuff. That's yeah. that's good to know. That's cons- um, in uh, in YouTube terms. That's considered a super fan. So yeah. There you well, go. I, I appreciate that. Thank you for tuning in. We we appreciate it. Um, plug your stuff for us one more time, uh, Josh, and let us know where where the, where the people can find you. Uh, just go to Weird Gaming Adventure. That's all I care about. Go to Weird Gaming Adventure YouTube, and uh, if you like it, like it. If you don't, well, it's it's. You tried. What, yeah, you, you, tried, tr- you, you tried. You just, it. you it's didn't get it. You didn't get the joke. Yeah, okay? It's your fault. Yeah, it's exactly. Your fault. I didn't make it for you guys then. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So thank you so much again. You thank you. Special shout out to Ray's and Pop Quote USA, the underscore wannabe critic are your codes for that. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we are looking forward to 2021. As I mentioned before, we have some great stuff coming out. Make sure you're checking out uh, our other webs, you know, our other podcasts. You know, uh, a guy and his wife will be returning. Game Club is in full swing currently. We've had, you know, multiple, we have several, multiple games ready to be reviewed already. Um, so that's exciting. Uh, look out for the Outer Rimmers. That's going to be coming out in the next, probably, I mean, realistically, it'll probably won't come out for six or seven months, but you have a lot to look forward to. Um, and make sure you're keeping an eye on the YouTube channel because there's going to be some Let's Plays dropping in the next couple of months. So. Um, Thank you so much again for tuning in and thank you for preparing yourselves for a plethora of hot takes and potentially unpopular opinions. We will see you you guys ready. Yeah, I'm ready. Wait before we're out. We're going to do, we're going to dance here. Ready? Come on. He's a maniac, maniac on the floor and you're dancing like you ever danced before. This is what I get for having him on. Whatever possessed you to check out the podcast or the YouTube channel today, I just want to say thank you so much for doing so. Uh, If this is your first time here, I I would appreciate it, you know, if you would consider subscribing. As you can tell, it's not just me here anymore. I mean, I do do stuff by myself, but the podcast is going to reside here from now on, uh, you know, in video form. So if you want to see more content, if you want to be notified, you know, every time we post something, whether it be a clip, a podcast, a review, an interview, whatever it may be, if it's gaming stuff, make sure you click that bell and hit the subscribe button and uh, we will see you next time. Thanks for sticking around and thank you for preparing yourselves for a plethora of hot takes and potentially unpopular opinions. I'm Gabriel Fast. I'll always be the wannabe critic.